Hey everybody, Tim and Julie here for another episode of Batman 1966, Season 1, Episodes 29 and 30, The Bookworm Turns While Gotham City Burns. Uh, so right off the bat, what'd you think? It was funny. I liked it. Oh, good. Um, I liked it too. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, part of the reason I really enjoyed it was because Roddy McDowell yeah. uh, plays the bookworm. I'm a huge Roddy McDowell fan. And I'm pretty sure... I know he was an actor when he was younger. Like in in like Britain and stuff like that. But this is probably the youngest I've ever seen him. Yeah. Because he's the only actor to be in every single Planet of the Apes of the original movies. And he was also in the live action TV show. I should do reviews of Planet of the Apes. I love Planet of the Apes. <laughs> um, so I know him from there. And then after we're done with this, if you want, we've talked about Batman the Animated Series. He's in that as well. He's okay. actually the voice actor for um, the Mad Hatter. Oh, okay. So, and I mean, I mean, you can hear his voice in this. And, yeah. And in the Mad Hatter, it's actually very similar. All he does is quote the Alice in Wonderland books. So it's very different than the Mad Hatter we've seen in this. Mm -hmm. And so for him, just Kiryasa and Kiryasa, like he's super creepy. So <laughs> it, it really works. It's like, it's like this good combination of the two. Um, so I, I love seeing Roddy McDowell. And then, of course... Honestly, probably the first thing I ever saw him in, that's just going to be a whole video of Roddy McDowell, who cares, <laughs> um, is probably Overboard oh, with okay. Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Russell, Russell and Goldie Hawn, because yes. he plays like her butler, uh -huh. and like at the very end when he like kicks him over, like I, I just, I love Roddy McDowell, huge fan. Um, a Bug's Life, I think was his last action, or his last movie, even though it was a boy's, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so loved, loved all that. The, the opening part of this is kind of the worst part for me. Like, I loved most of this whole story, but the opening where it's all about the bridge and Commissioner Gordon getting shot. Yes, that was... Which, I mean, I I instantly knew it was fake because there's no way. Yeah. And it was it was almost graphic for this show. I mean, like, I've obviously seen much worse. Yeah, because everybody was... Uh... But, um, yeah, and, and none of it really mattered. Like, they don't really do anything with the bridge and other than, like, Commissioner Gordon was faked. Like, why, what was the point of even faking it? Like, right. the whole thing seemed yeah. very odd to me. Um, lots of little stuff. I liked him reading the book by touch, which that's one of those, like, if this had been made, like, today, I feel like there would have been more about that. Like, him being, like, a mutant or something and being able mm -hmm. to, like, absorb everything in the book just by touching it. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it just, it just goes so quick. Uh, we see a little bit about the parachute pickup. And then, um, I don't know, probably it seemed like, because it actually got a reaction from you, this is the first of supposedly what's many cameos of them walking up the wall and a celebrity oh, yeah. sticks their head out the window. Jerry Lewis. It's Jerry Lewis. <laughs> um, to me, Jerry Lewis is probably the most famous, for me, uh, the nutty professor uh -huh. or the absent-minded professor. Yep. Which people today my age know the Nutty Professor more, or the, yeah, as like Eddie Murphy, his remakes, or the Absent Minded Professor of Robin Williams from the Flubber movie. But Jerry Lewis originated both roles. Mm -hmm. So I know him. Um, and then, of course, his like, uh, oh, what is it? Where he does it every year, the television. The telethon, yeah. The telethon, stuff like that. So yeah. he's been around forever. forever yeah. Um, so yeah, him sticking his head out the window. It's one of those, like, I know who he is, but I don't know if I would have instantly realized who he is. Mm -hmm. When For me, if I'd been watching this by myself, it would have been like, wait, I know, who is that? that is, that's somebody. Um, just because I'm not as familiar. But I have, I've seen his movies before. Yeah. And then who was he? He was always partnered with a singer. It was... Uh, uh, Dean Martin. Yes, yeah, yeah. Martin and Lewis. There we go. Um, so we got that. Um, I love the whole, like, you never hit a man with glasses. Yeah. I should wear... I, I'm actually supposed to wear glasses, but it always reflects, and I don't right. like how it looks on there. Um, and it was funny, as they were climbing the wall, and Robin took his hand, one hand off, oh. and he got... Always, always put your hand back in the wall. Yes. Which, I don't know, I've, I've always had heard the jokes of, like, their, their capes go straight down so you can tell that they're just walking normal. Mm -hmm. And, like, the first couple episodes we watched, I was like, their capes are going back. What are you talking about? And then it took, like, the second episode for me to realize, like, there's a, a metal pole that's keeping it up, 
but then the rest of it's still draping down. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's... <laughs> okay, reverse back climb. And then they start walking backwards. I was like, ugh. It's a little rough, but, I mean, it's, it's 66. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Um, We see a lie detector, so that was kind of interesting. I don't know how long lie detectors have been around, mm -hmm. but I was kind of... I like that one. Um, Probably the... So, like I said, the, the opening scene threw me off because I was like, what is the point in this? But the the whole, like, memory bank scene with Batman and Chief O'Hare's, like, interrupt. Stop interrupting me! I was like, that just, it, like, the whole thing. Like, that was the worst part of this about this episode where he's like, I have to go into my subconscious to figure out what the bookworm had said. Mm -hmm. And I was like, like, really? Like, what is, what is that? Like... I'm, I'm a big Sherlock fan, and there's a TV show with Sherlock, and it's all about the Mind Palace. And I was like, oh, it just seems really weird to me. Um, we see, is it Aunt Harriet? Yes. Yes, Aunt Harriet and Alfred getting knocked out. I just cannot remember Aunt well, Harriet. That was, yeah, because when... I didn't see any of the guests actually touch her. Oh. It all went to Alfred, but they both... Just knocked out. It was knocked probably out. just a prop thing. Like, it accidentally, like, blew. Like, that's that's my superhuman mutant power is smoke will find me. Like, if I'm outside and somebody's smoking a cigarette, like, I could be upwind, but it will defy the laws of physics just to get to me. <laughs> so that's like, whatever. Um, let's see, we get that. The, the bat magnet gun was kind of intense, where it looked like he was holding, like, a rifle. Mm -hmm. And then they opened the giant book. And from there, that's about where the episode was like, okay, like, I get it. It's it's done. Like, this, it seemed like the story could have been cut down a little bit. It it, it kind of dragged in parts. But I, I still really liked it. But it's... Yeah. yeah, when they first got to get, you know, got into the fight with, mm -hmm. when they were just, all of them, just dancing, or kind of dancing around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah, and where they're, like, doing the weird <laughs> march thing. March thing, and... Oh. That, yep. was, that was funny. Parts of it, part, yeah. Like, parts of it were a little, like, oh, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. And then other parts were great. Like, I don't know. As somebody who reads a lot, like, I don't know. If I had to identify with a villain, I mean, like, you'd want to be somebody extravagant or eccentric, like the Joker or something. Mm -hmm. But realistically, as somebody who reads a lot, I'd probably just end up being a bookworm. Like, just, like, chucking books at people, being <laughs> like, why don't you know this? Or like the his little henchwoman who misquoted something, and he's like, oh, "You get a C minus." Oh yeah. And so stuff like that. I was like, "Oh yeah, I." Yeah, because he quoted it a lot of the, a lot of the books. Mm hmm. And that's like I said, it, it reminds me a lot of when he later on does the Mad Hatter, because he just does quotes and quotes, like he quotes the Jabberwocky, and he quotes this, and he quotes through the Looking Glass and stuff like that. So this this whole thing is very very reminiscent. I can see why they hired him to be the Mad Hatter later on. Mm -hmm. Um, I really hope he comes back because I yeah. I love Roddy McDowell. Like I'm just gonna fanboy over him. Sadly, I don't remember when he died. Because I, I, it was like 98, so I was like 10. So I probably didn't even see Planet of the Apes yet. And Low Belly, Low Belly loves Roddy McDowell. Um, okay, any other closing thoughts? No, I, like you, I hope we see him again. Okay. Does Low Belly have any closing thoughts? No. He's like, what's a Batman? Yeah. No. What's okay. a bookworm? What's a, what's a bookworm? Um, okay, so for those who have seen this one, what did you guys think about Roddy McDowell? Like I said, the youngest I've seen him. Now, I kind of want to look up, because I know he did, like, a Lassie movie when he was, like, 10 or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so i, I, I got to look up some of his younger stuff. So what did you think of Roddy McDowell? What did you think of the bookworm? What did you think of his connections to the Mad Hatter? Um, which is a little bit more in the future. Um, what did you think about the whole thing? Go ahead, let us know, and we will see you guys next time for... Death in slow motion and the Riddler's false notion.